Welcome to the Hyperfast Wealth Show. On this episode, we have an amazing guest. He is a real estate investor who has done several multifamily syndications and branched outside beyond that vertical, going into self-storage, even buying a hemp farm recently. He's also been a coach and worked with Tony Robbins and has been on over 25,000 coaching calls. Welcome to the show, Trevor McGregor. All right. Welcome to the show today, Trevor. How are you doing? Doing very well, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm excited to, to have you on. You're, you're dialing in or, or, or signing in, I should say, all the way from Vancouver. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. We call beautiful Vancouver home and uh, do a lot of real estate here and uh, married three boys. It's a great place to live. Awesome. Well, before we jump into your story and some of the great stuff that you have to offer our listeners today, why don't you just tell folks a little bit about your background and you know, how you got to where you are today? Well, thank you very much. And yeah, it's a kind of a neat story. I think like most people, you know, you, you, you have a middle class upbringing, you go off to college, you study, you know, to get a degree. For me, that was business. And then I went to work for a hospitality company, Dan. So I literally worked with a company that owned restaurants and was expanding and became their director of operations. And really in 1999, I was asked to put a lot of money into the expansion plan of this company. And I literally scraped together my savings. My 401k was cashed in. I even convinced my own parents to take out a second mortgage on the family home. And it was a six-figure mortgage. I shoved all this money into this expansion. And for the first year and a half, it went well. And after that, it completely imploded. And it ended up losing all of that money that I put into the expansion. So it was really a coach at that time who literally said, Trevor, what's happened to you is unfortunate, but you're still young. You know, it's time to get up, dust yourself off and, and get back on the horse. And I said, yeah, but I don't know how. And he said one thing, Dan, that changed my life forever. He said, have you ever thought of investing in real estate? And I said, real estate? I don't know too much about real estate, but that's literally, you know, where my story starts to get really fun because I started, you know, scraping other money together, bored off of other friends, not family members. And I bought one little property and Vancouver was going through great appreciation at that time. So I leveraged that and bought, you know, a condo and leveraged that and bought my first duplex. And that's where I discovered cash flow. And then I just kept buying and buying and buying and amassed a large portfolio. And in just two years, not only did I pay off all of my failed loans, including my parents, but I had a really nice, you know, cash flowing portfolio on the top of that. And as says, people kept watching me do it. They kept asking me, how are you doing it? And that's when I started to coach other people. It was my son's, you know, little league baseball coach, a soccer coach. And these folks started to go out there and rinse and repeat as to what I was doing. And in a relatively short amount of time, they too started to have some success. And that's really where my you know, entire life lives today, doing real estate and doing coaching for other real estate investors who want to grow it big. Yeah. So, so we, had, we had the connection drop for a, a second, but I think you were the last I heard, just to make sure everyone you know, listens, is you, you, you started to succeed for yourself. Other people started asking questions. I think you mentioned your son's Little League. Yep. coach started getting help from you. That's it. And really it was at that time that I was working <clears throat> with my own coach at the time. And he was a Tony Robbins coach. Great guy. I know you're familiar with Tony as am I. And he said literally that Tony was hiring new coaches for the business division. And he goes, you got a corporate background. You're great with real estate. You're great with people. Would you consider coming in and coaching for Tony? And I applied and ultimately, you know, went on to coach with Tony and his team for over half a decade, coached a ton of doctors, lawyers, real estate investors, millionaires, even a billionaire. And literally to this day, I've done over 25,000 coaching sessions, you know, with business people all over the planet. So it's been a really cool place to really not only watch, you know, what was 
helping me get to where I was in business and in real estate, but literally where other people tend to win and tend to fall down as well. Yeah, I think, you know, there's like 25,000. That's just amazing. And I know when you're coaching, when you're teaching, you're really learning to master the subject at the highest level. So clearly from doing that, you yourself have, have probably learned a ton and I want to get into your, your coaching and some of the observations you've learned from those 25,000 calls. Before we do, though, I think I mean, it's kind of interesting, you know, that you started off with a failure. I think most people that succeed go through that period where they, they mess up, they fail. And, and, you know, that's really what ends up, you know, how they respond to that really is, is what defines them. And, and you were you were able to learn from that failure to, to get into real estate through this coach you had, what, what do you think made you receptive and, 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 and like, how did you put yourself in the position to be able to not only hear that advice, but then to go take advantage of it and, and do what you did since then? Well, it's a great question. And again, my back was up against the wall. I mean, I owed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, I was at a pretty low point in my life, to be honest. And it was really at that time where I started to read books. I started to listen to audios. I started to, you know, go to these events. And it was really the coach that said, look, you know, a setback is often a setup for a comeback. And as I look back now, Dan, that's exactly what it was. Had I not failed, you know, in the hospitality business, I would have never, ever even thought of getting into the real estate business, let alone you know, now coaching people all over the US, Canada, um, you know, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, even Asia, on how to really rinse and repeat real estate success. So, you know, I'm actually, you know, at the time, I wasn't very happy with the failure. But let's like Napoleon Hill says in Think and Grow Rich, there really is no failure. There's only feedback. And I got a lot of feedback. And, you know, so does, so is you and, and your, your wife and, you know, a lot of the people that you've coached and mentored over the years, it's just kind of what we call the entrepreneur's journey at this stage. Yeah, I think I, I, I like what you said there that the, the uh, setback is really the setup for the comeback. I think, you know, it's, 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 it's something that, that people have to be willing to go through the, the failure. And I, th I think the, probably the biggest reason that most people don't have success at the levels that, that maybe you or other people like you've had is because they're not willing to take the risk of, of going through that failure. That's it. And that's oftentimes what prevents people from really, you know, remembering that oftentimes we are just three feet from gold as you're working at it, working at it, working at it, working at it, and you don't get what you want. You get disgruntled, you get dismayed, you find the path of least resistance kicks in and you find yourself on the couch watching Netflix. Well, that's not for me or for you or for people listening to your show, but really just a reminder that sometimes, you know, it's not just what you do, it's who you are being en route to becoming who you meant to be. So can you describe the, the transition you made from being the doer, you know, going out, finding the deals, doing the deals, to, you know, first scaling that and then second, teaching other people how to do that. Yeah, again, I think that, you know, there's really nothing new in real estate that it's really, there's fundamental, you know, foundational, you know, fundamentals of really finding the deal, you know, funding the deal, running the asset. And as I used to wear many different hats, Dan, and do all of those things, I found that, you know, I had a sweet spot in really going out there and talking to people. I didn't really like sitting behind a computer and analyzing the numbers. I mean, I'm good at that, but my real passion is getting out there and talking to brokers, talking to building owners and property managers and literally finding a deal that's mutually beneficial. So as I did that and literally did a lot of that, I got to a point where I said, wow, you know, I can keep doing this or I can start leveraging things to other people and helping, you know, them get to a place where they're utilizing their greatest skill sets and assets to get the job done. And I did mine. And that's when I started to form partnerships and teams and, and really now have invested in everything from single family and small multifamily to, you know, massive apartment buildings all over Florida, Texas, South Carolina, you know, Memphis, 
Um, but even beyond that, you know, going into self storage in Key West, Florida, getting into buying a, a 1900 acre hemp farm in Colorado last year, um, taking a run at things outside of the US, whether that's in Costa Rica or my wife and I have bought into a company in Australia, because I believe that, you know, having multiple streams of income is a cool thing. And it's also cool to learn in other asset classes because that helps me as a coach, you know, support anybody anywhere, anytime with what they're trying to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how, how, how was it getting out of your, your, your sweet spot? I imagine when you first started, you were in one type of real estate and then, and then you expanded into, you know, maybe a bigger version, like going from single family to multifamily, but then what's the leap like when you get into something completely different, like the self storage or the hemp farms? Well, there's a ton of uncertainty, that's for sure. And you know, that old saying, you don't know what you don't know until you know. But the cool thing was, is I found and surrounded myself with people that were already doing what it is I was trying to do. So, you know, um, you know, there's another great podcast, Joe Fairless, you know, the best ever show. And Joe and I have become partners and good friends. And, you know, Joe became an expert, you know, in doing what he does in multifamily. So there's other people like that who are literally, you know, kind of like Gary Keller says, doing the one thing and they're staying in their lane of multifamily, whereas this guy stays in his lane of mobile home parks, whereas this guy stays in his lane of single family. Maybe this one is RV parks, you know, resorts. And so I find the guys that are doing and playing at a very high level in those areas. And literally that's where I go and profess not to know enough other than to partner with them and learn and grow beside them. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you, you got to go out and find the people that are the best at in that particular area and find ways it sounds like to, to partner with them or, yep. or have them become your mentor or, you know, part of the deal in some way, shape or form. So, you know, if you're not, if you're not an expert in the exact mechanics of the deal, you're finding someone else that is before you just jump off into something new. If, if that's I'm it. Hearing you correctly. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I, I like to fly in airplanes where pilots have flown planes before, right? I like to go on cruises where the captain knows how to steer a ship. So again, it's not rocket science. And again, I think that the path to mastery is simplicity. That is the simpler you keep things without overcomplicating it or trying to do it your way, the sometimes the easier it is to get to your outcome, you know, with other people than trying to navigate it on your own. Um, so, you know, you, you've successfully done real estate, other parts, other types of real estate as well in, in several different fields. Now you've, you know, you mentioned earlier, you've coached 25,000 coaching calls. I'm sure you've learned a lot from that. You know, what are some of the, the common things that you've learned while teaching other business owners, entrepreneurs, et cetera? Well, I love the question, Dan, and I think it goes back to our mentor, Tony Robbins, where Tony says success leaves clues, right? If you really want to be successful, find other people that have already done what it is you're trying to do. So as I took a look at that, I also started to see how failure leaves clues, right? And I've identified what I call really the five key reasons why people fail to scale in real estate. So it doesn't matter what asset class you're in or how much wealth you're trying to amass. You know, after doing that many calls with that many men and women, you know, of all different ethnicities, all different backgrounds, all different ages, all different cultures, what I find is these five things are universal. And if you like, I can take the listeners through all five things from one to five, and that'll give them some perspective. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go through that, that list of five. I think it would be extremely interesting and, and beneficial for everyone listening, <laughs> watching. Well, it is. And I'm inviting you and the listener to think back to your journey because you'll identify where you're at in all five of these, at least, you know, at some level. So number one is what I always kick it off with. And number one is what I call limiting beliefs. I mean, it's like that old Henry Ford quote, you, you think you can't, you can't. And if you think you can, you can. And so what I start doing with the client is I take a look at, well, what are their beliefs? You know, what is their values? What are their rules? What is their, 
you know, idea of what might be holding them back versus what's really holding them back. I mean, for a lot of people, we're recording this during COVID times and they think now's not a good time to do a deal or, you know, brokers are not doing deals or investors aren't lending money. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. I mean, I'm doing a ton of deals as are my students and my clients. So always start by taking a look at number one and that is the limiting beliefs that could be preventing you from moving forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You bet. Number two is what I call a lack of a strategic plan. Because here's the truth. More people spend time planning their vacation to Mexico every year than they do planning their, their life and their business. So what we do is we start with the end in mind. We take a look at, well, what do you really want? Where do you want it? You know, When do you want to achieve it? And then we reverse engineer a plan to help them get there. And we leave no stone unturned. We take a look at market data. We take a look at, you know, should you be in a partnership? We take a look at, you know, interest rates. We take a look at all of the things that are going to go into helping you win the game of real estate to go from A to Z or A to Z um, along the way. Does that resonate? Yes. You bet. Yeah. So if we get rid of your limiting beliefs and we create a strategic plan of action, Number three was what I call a lack of systems for support. Because here's the truth. Once you get the ball rolling, you're going to need systems that support you in your quest to go out there and conquer. That could be other people. That could be technology. That could be, you know, things that really you need to get started like spreadsheets and market analysis data and all those things. Because what I find is people start and stop. They create a system. That system falls or goes off to the wayside or breaks and then they have to go and reinvent the wheel all over again. Well, it shouldn't have to be that way in real estate. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, yeah, you definitely need the, the support systems to, to, to expand. Yep. Number four, Dan, is my favorite topic, and that is just simply what I call poor time management, right? Poor time management. We know we all have 168 hours a week to do what we need to do. Now, we sleep for a lot of those hours, we eat, we take care of the spouse, we play with the kids. But with the time that you're dedicating to real estate, are you doing the high impact, high income activities, right? Or are you doing the busy work? Because we know statistically in an eight hour workday that most people are working for about three to three and a half hours only, right? Well, what's up happening to the other hours? Well, people are doing busy work instead of you know doing what they really should be doing to move their real estate empire, you know, north. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think that's unfortunately it's just, it's just so easy to fall into that trap. And I mean, you know, even burning an hour or two a day on like Netflix or TV or internet browsing, like it just that that stuff adds up and into you know real real money loss. Like, and I, I guarantee you, like people like Elon Musk and and you know, Steve Jobs, when he was alive, like they weren't, you know, they were using probably every hour they could. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, those are two great examples of people that really understood, you know, what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing and how to leverage other people to really do what Tony Robbins calls optimizing and maximizing time. And you go back to watching TV. I mean, it's a terrible stat, but the average American watches 36 and a half hours of television a week. Right? Wow, that's, it's, it's just like a, that's almost an entire work week. It is. And when you right? think about that, you know, that's mind numbing television instead of, you know, working on a business that could create impact and income. So that's really number four. And the final one, number five, is really lack of execution and course correction. That is, once you get rid of your limiting beliefs, you create the plan of action, right? You create systems for support, you figure out what you're going to be working on and when you got to then go out and take what we call intelligent and inspired action to help move yourself from where you are to where you want to be. And not only do you have to take that action, but you've got to check in and have benchmarks to see, are you on the right path along the way? Because if you don't have benchmarks, you know, you can't measure. And if you can't measure it, how the heck are you ever going to, you know, get what you want? It's almost like playing sports. If we don't keep score, how do we know who wins the game? So does that make sense? Yeah, no, we, we, um, one thing we did a few years ago that really helped our business, um, go from like big to, to bigger was implementing some of the principles 
in the book traction uh, that yep. you, you know, I think they call it the EOS method. So just having this, this weekly dashboard and then quarterly goals and, um, you know, annual goals and, and you kind of plan it in reverse, but then it, it all kind of boils down into, you know, 10 or less kind of metrics that you can look at almost on an ongoing basis to, to know, you know, what adjustments do I need to make if I, if I want to hit that bigger goal that I set. Exactly. Absolutely love that. And again, most people are flying by the seat of their pants and then they start, you know, comparing themselves to other people, wondering why others are able to achieve success, you know, and they're still kind of at ground zero. So again, those are the five keys that I would invite you and the listener to really check in with and ask yourself, you know, are there limiting beliefs that you need to let go of? Is there a little bit more planning maybe you need to do for 2021? Right? Are there systems that you need to bring in to support the outcome? Do you really need to take a look at your calendar or your day planner and optimize it? And then ultimately, what are you committing to execute and course correct? Because if you do that, I guarantee that you're going to be going further faster than if you didn't. All right. Well, I, th I think, um, you know, anyone and everyone looking to scale should pay attention to these five things. You know, you've, you've made these observations after talking to, tw you know, having 25,000 conversations. That's a, that's a lot. Um, so if you're listening, uh, you know, make sure you are applying or, or, or taking a hard look and are you failing at any one or, or, or a combination of these five areas? Uh, what, what do you think, you know, if someone like takes a, a hard look, does an audit, does an inventory. Um, well, well, I guess before I ask that question, for, first question would be like, how do you figure out, you know, am I lacking one of these areas or, or am I good enough? Like how, how would someone even go about that? Well, I think it's, it's, it's really getting a, you know, an honest inventory done, right? If you take a look at your limiting beliefs, are you reading great books? Are you listening to audios? Are you going to events? Are you working with coaches? I mean, there's so many different things that can go into getting rid of the cobwebs, right? And clearing those out to make way for you to get new neural connections of what's possible, right? If you notice that you're not maybe getting as far ahead as fast as you want. Well, what is your roadmap recipe or blueprint look like, right? I know that if I follow a recipe, a roadmap or a blueprint for real estate, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, that I could probably get to where I want to go faster than if I didn't have, you know, the GPS. So I think taking a look at, you know, the past and asking yourself, you know, what have I been doing in the last year or so versus, you know, what could I do differently you know, today and in and, and the next day and moving forward and really break things down into, you know, asking yourself on a scale of one to 10, where do I land in all five of those key areas? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, and I know, uh, you know, you, you offer coaching and, and I, I think, you know, one of the best ways to, to really figure this out is, is to have someone from the outside you know, take a look. I think that's part of what, you know, or part of the advantage that any coach can offer is that they're able to, to take this unbiased outside look and see things, maybe, you know, some people call them blind spots, but see yep. things that, that you can't see. Well, that's just it. I mean, you know, the inside of the jar can't read the outside of the label. And that's why I've always surrounded myself, even from the time where I went broke and literally had nothing left to a time where I am today, you know, which was a span of just almost 20 years. I continued to not just talk the talk, but I walked the walk. I have two coaches, you know, in my life. Plus I have an accountability partner in Seattle, you know, that kicks my butt regularly because I really believe Dan, that every problem is simply a problem of perspective. That is, you see a problem through one set of lenses, I might say, hey, let's take off those lenses and put on these glasses and see it a little bit differently. And it's really when people see through a different lens or they hear their coach, a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, a facilitator, share something, they start to see it from a different perspective. Would you agree? I agree, yeah. 
You bet. So, you know, I know you've invested in coaches and mentors. Your wife has invested in coaches and mentors. I certainly have and will continue to do that. And so I really take a look at, well, what's the real ROI in working with a coach? And I'm not just referring to, you know, return on your income, but also a ripple of impact. Because when you work with a coach and you learn a little bit more about really what the world needs, it expands your ability to go out there and deliver value to people. And then that value becomes, you know, returning to you through what's called the byproduct of value, which is money. So again, it's return on investment, but it's also a ripple of impact that can help you impact more people. And in the end, make more money and then go out there and change the world with that. Yeah, I, I agree. Coaches play a huge role. You know, my wife and I wouldn't be where we are today if we weren't getting outside perspective and you know seeking out mentors so i highly encourage you know everyone listening watching to look for a good coach or, and, and, and a good mentor and accountability partner um if, if you really want to push yourself to get to the next level yeah and it's just like any athlete do you take a look at you know any golfer or any football player any basketball player they've got multiple coaches that have helped them to arrive where they are today. And, you know, they just have all said that they wouldn't have been able to achieve the phenomenal levels of success if it weren't for some great people along the way. So Trevor, we, uh, we do the hyper fast round with all of our guests. If you are ready for some rapid fire questions and answers, I'd like to proceed. Let's do it, Dan. Let's go. All right. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate investor? You know, again, the biggest piece of advice is find somebody that's already doing what it is that you want to go off and do, right? Maybe you can JV with them. Maybe you can partner with them. Maybe they can coach or mentor you. But again, um, don't do it the hard way. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Go find somebody that already has. Okay. What about uh, an experienced investor? What's your biggest piece of advice you, you know, someone who's been doing it for a while? Well, again, I think that, you know, uh, success isn't in a straight line. I've never met an investor, nor have I had a straight line from where I am to where I want to be. That oftentimes there's roadblocks, there's obstacles, there's delays, there's money lessons. And so if you're going to sign up in this industry, be prepared for both, because if you're going to celebrate the successes, you better be able to navigate the challenges along the way. Yeah, I agree. What's the um, what's the biggest mistake you've made in a real estate deal, and how did you overcome it? You know, what did you learn from it? Well, it's a great question, and, and I know that a lot of people can really resonate with this. But it's really speculation, where you know you invest with your you know your emotions rather than looking at the facts or the raw data. So <clears throat> whether that was an investment that I shouldn't have gone into in the U S or one that I shouldn't have gone into in another country, a foreign country where maybe English isn't the primary language and I don't understand the laws or how the currency works. I mean, we all have good intentions, but it's really about you going and doing your due diligence and fact checking and making sure you understand what's in play before you just go into it, expecting success. What, um, what would we find you doing when you're not, investing, you know, looking at deals on a coaching call? You would find me either um, scuba diving the Great Barrier Reef of, in Australia or jumping out of an airplane and doing some skydiving, uh, spending time on a beautiful ski slope with my wife or my three boys. Um, we travel an absolute ton and we've worked very hard to get to that place where maybe not so much during COVID, Dan, but we're usually in Italy or Hong Kong, or Alaska, or Australia, or New Zealand, or UK. We love to travel. Um, we love to impact people as well. So oftentimes, you know, we're doing some impact work. And uh, my wife just wrote a new children's book. And it's literally an amazing project called An Alphabet for a New Humanity, where she rewrote the alphabet with kids in mind. And it's <laughs> A is for apple, or B is for boy, C is for cat. And I know you've got a lot of kids and more on the way. Um, she rewrote the alphabet where A is for abundance and B is for bravery 
and C is for compassion and D is for diversity. And we've literally taken this book to the market this year and it's getting rave reviews all over the planet. And for every book we sell, we also plant a tree and we've planted, you know, tens of thousands of trees just in the last few months alone. It's been a lot of fun. That's amazing. And, and, and what an impact that will make. What's, what is the, uh, the book called and how can people sure. get it? I happen to have a copy on my desk. I don't know if the viewers or the you know, people watching can see it, but it's called A New Alphabet for Humanity. It's available on Amazon or on Shopify, or you can just go to her website, which is alphabetforhumanity.com. It's full of amazing illustrations and just really bright colors for kids. And it literally teaches them, you know, a lot of the things that, you know, the world really needs right now, like diversity and empathy and kindness and gratitude and all of those things. And um, we've got a lot of, you know, adults that are enjoying the book as much as kids, as much as, you know, grandparents. And it's just been a, a smashing success. Amazing. Well, uh, yeah, what a, what a tremendous story. If, if you guys have kids or, or know a kid that could use it, you know, get, grab a copy. Um, so it could, it could definitely make an impact on their lives. And uh, that, that's cool. Uh, last question on the hyperfast round. Where do you see yourself in five years? Wow. Five years from now, I see myself doing exactly what I'm doing right now doing, you know, coaching, teaching, mentoring. I do a lot of keynote speaking. Um, I love to get into different deals and continue to meet new people and, you know, try new things. So I think that five years from now, Dan will be, you know, similar to what I'm doing today because I'm very passionate about what I do. Uh, I'm hungry to help more people achieve phenomenal levels of success. Um, my wife, Lisa, and I want to do more impact investing. And so, there's some other, you know, philanthropic projects that we've got on the, on the back burner that we're going to be bringing into play. Um, I just want everybody to really remember that if, um, you know, there's a will, there's a way. And that if you're defiantly committed to success and you roll up your sleeves and you get after it, that you too can achieve, you know, phenomenal levers of success and take other people along with you as well. Awesome. Well, it's exciting to learn from you and exciting to see, you know, you hitting your, your stride and, and just being able to impact so many other people through, through teaching. So thank you for that. Uh, before we sign off, if people want to contact you or learn more about what you're doing or connect with you on social media, you know, how, how should they do that? Absolutely. You can find me on, you know, select social media channels, which is, you know, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, obviously probably the, probably the, best two to get me. But the easiest way is just go over to my website, which is trevormcgregor.com. And I'll spell that. It's T-R-E-V-O-R-M-C-G-R-E-G-O-R.com, trevormcgregor.com. And all my contact information is there. But yeah, for anybody that is defiantly committed to, you know, living and playing, you know, at the highest levels, I'd love to chat. Awesome. Well, yeah. If you're listening and, and want to learn more about what Trevor's doing or connect with him, go to trevormcgregor.com and, uh, and check him out because uh, he's, he's got a lot to offer. And this has been a great show. Thank you so much, Trevor. And thank you for having me on and uh, keep up the great work yourself. All right. And to all the listeners and viewers out there, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you wanna see more videos like this, click right here. And if you're new to the channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And let me know in the comments what you think about the videos. I'll see you next time.